I'm Nancy Kartsonis. I'm a counselor in Vancouver. I've worked as a school counselor for 20 years in three different parts of the city. I've also been a member of the District Critical Incident Team for 10 years and two years as the leader of the team. Okay, stigma is a negative perception of, or stereotype about mental health. Um, teens are afraid that people are going to find out about their mental health issues or that their parents may find out and this may negatively affect them. Yeah, they feel it could have negative implications at the school, in the community, or in their family. Um, there's also privacy and ethics, um, confidentiality issues related to this. Parents are reluctant to reveal this to the school because they feel that their child may be stigmatized. Uh, they may feel that their child may have lost opportunities. Uh, for example, the university may find out that they uh, may be limited in terms of scholarship opportunities or other, uh, for example, travel, etc. Parents may also need education about mental health literacy because they don't understand what these conditions are. They might not. Yeah, they might not know what the condition is or understand it and the impact of it. Uh, they may think that their child or teen is disobedient of them and therefore like not getting out of bed because they're trying to, they're in a power struggle, whereas the child may be struggling with depression or anxiety. <clears throat> um, the parents may not understand the motivation behind their teen's behavior. And there sometimes is a breakdown of communication within the family. Some teens, uh, they want extreme privacy. They don't tell other people, even their family members, that they're taking medication. They may not take, tell school staff that they're taking medication unless we are working in a small and trusting relationship with them. Um, it's several sessions in that you normally may be asking things about medication. So they might not reveal that on the first go. Uh, they might feel fear that their, their friends um, may worry that they're dealing drugs or doing drugs or taking pills. Um, they may worry about the side effects or other problems that come with some of the medications. Uh, they may worry about the impact of the medications on their learning, so they don't want to tell people that they're on the medications. Um, yeah, they may also fear that we may find out that they're seeing a professional in the community regarding their mental illness. To address anti-stigma, I think we need to do mental health awareness across all grades of all students in the school. Uh, major events like Bell Let's Talk Day in the community also raise awareness generally in the community. Educating adults, including teachers, staff, and other professionals and parents about what is mental illness, what are what is regular teen behavior, and what is you know irregular or possibly something more alarming. Um, professional development um, in the school system, including educating engineers, custodians, uh, first aid attendants, secretaries, all the people in your building that need to be aware of potentially mental health conditions. Um, guidance classes through small opportunities, meeting with kids in small groups and bringing in guest speakers, presentations, mindfulness, suicide prevention. Uh, those type of things, doing depression screening, screening for anxiety, those bring awareness to the entire group of kids. And then the education of the bystander provides opportunity for certain youth to come forward, step forward, they feel it's okay or they can reveal this to their friend and potentially get support and help. Um, other organizations in our community like Kelty Mental Health, Children's Hospital, um, Mood Disorders Association, other nonprofit groups, Josh, Josh Platzer Foundation, um, Adams Apples, these are organizations in our community that are reaching out um, to try to bring awareness to these important issues. In Vancouver School Board, we also have SASE, which is coordinated effort of school uh, youth engagement. Um, in, in regards to um, education with drug and alcohol and connect, connection to school. 
So anything that's connecting youth to the school, uh, connecting them to the adults, important people in the schools, as well as connecting them with each other, these are important, uh, important things. Also mental health awareness clubs have just been formed in some of the schools. Uh, GSA clubs that are working with LGBTQ and transgender youth and school events such as Pink Day, Anti-Bullying Day, um, Trans Day of Awareness. These are important events for all youth. There's a lot of uh, shame around these issues. Uh, there's fear. People are afraid of, of what this um, diagnosis might mean or what the issue is. Um, there's also a loss of face in some cultures, some families. People fear a loss of status or that other people will find out and therefore their child or teen might be compromised by this information or this might be misused by people. They're fearing judgment from other people uh, regarding their, the issues of their child. Uh, some people feel that this uh, condition might be temporary and it might just go away on its own. So they're not unable to engage or not ready to engage with help because they feel that it might just go away on its own. Um, they also have a lack of education on this topic, so they might not be very knowledgeable with like, for example, what is depression? How does it manifest? Uh, they might fear the reaction of their family, their friends, other people, you know, their coach, people in the community. Uh, parents also may want privacy and they may want to keep the issues within their family and therefore they will not engage with outside professionals or people outside the family because of the fear of stigma. It's just a general stigma in regards to people with mental health that they may be crazy or somehow atypical, whereas we know that many youth and adults suffer from mental illnesses and they have productive lives, they you know, can lead pr productive lives and do well. One program that uh, we have at our school and that operates in some of the schools is a peer counseling program where we train um, older students, grade 12 students. We take them to an off-site retreat. They're trained in breaking confidentiality, active listening. Uh, they're looking for things like bullying in the schools, in the classroom. They're trained in depression awareness and a multitude of issues. And so those outreach um, students will interact with our grade 8 students and they will provide mentorship and guidance to them and lead them to the adults, uh, break confidentiality in terms of high-risk uh, situations. Another thing we're using is Stan Kutcher's um, screening tools with our doctors, psychiatrists. Some of our people in our organization have been trained in terms of depression screening, ADHD screens and anxiety. So we're using common screening tools across, across different professions, which has been extremely useful in communicating with, um, again, physicians, uh, psychiatrists, pediatricians. I think these are important issues and we shouldn't be afraid of engaging with them and talking about them. And always contact your, a trusted person at your child's school if you have concerns about your child speak to you know community members, physicians, mental health uh, professionals. We can also speak with the mental health professionals if your child gives us consent or if you consent or both likely ideally both of you consent. Um, and with working together, all of us working together, your child will hopefully be able to overcome these issues and be doing well at school and a happy member of society.